Well, wonderful. Welcome to the Youth Park Conference 2009, and I'm very excited, and I'm glad that I can be with you, not in person, but thanks to technology, I can join you all the way from Montreal in Canada. Last year, 2008, was a, an awesome Youth Park Conference. I'm glad I could fly from Côte d'Ivoire, though I was with the UN there, and join you. This year, I cannot be physically present, but I thank God for this medium of communicating. Youth Power Conference 2009. And some of you may be aware that the Youth Power Conference is entering its fifth year this year, 2009. And since last year, we've been looking at a very strategic approach to raise a 1,000 man army for change. We are looking at having a thousand identifiable youth who are inspired and empowered to be real agents of change in the nation and indeed over the rest of the continent of Africa and beyond. These people we expect will form a socioeconomic base, but not just that, but a spiritual powerhouse and an intellectual think tank for the nation, for the continent, for our world. Change agents, we call them. Change agents, we call you and I. We're looking at change as an acronym, C-H-A-N-G-E, and it's interesting that there are six letters in that word, you know, in what is called numerology, the number six represents man. Man was created on the sixth day, six is the number of man. The Antichrist is 666, the number of man. Six is the number of man, and it's interesting that we're looking at change in every facet of human endeavor. We're looking at C, change in the church, we're looking at H, change in our homes. We're looking at A, change in, on, on the airwaves or in the media generally. We're looking at N, change in the nation. We're looking at G, change in our get ghettos. I'm talking about our communities, our workplaces. And finally, E, change in our educational institutions. Last year, we started off, blasted off by looking at change in two areas. We looked at change on our airwaves and we looked at change regarding the nation. This year we are tackling two other facets of change. We want to look at H, the change, change in our homes, because indeed the home is the bedrock of society. You break the home, you break society. No wonder that you know, our society is crumbling, for families are falling apart, marriages are going bonkers, children are going wayward, and that reflects and even is magnified in the rest of society. So we're looking at change in our homes. And then we are looking at a famous expression, charity begins at home. And we're looking also at change in E, our educational institutions. To remind you about change, ladies and gentlemen, the only constant in life is change. Change happens. Whether we like it or not, whether we observe it or not, whether we think we are creating it or not, the only constant in life is change. Change happens, period. And it's an ironical change statement because we're talking about the fact that a constant, something that always stays, is change. <laughs> but the thing is that every generation will bring change. Abraham's generation brought change. Martin Luther's generation brought change. Hitler's generation brought change. Your father's generation, my father's generation brought change. Our generation is bringing change. Change is brought on by every single generation. And for me, my definition of change is this. Change is the difference between history as you came to find it and history as you leave it behind. History as you come and find it on earth History as you turn and leave behind, that is change. Change is not necessarily a good thing. Change is neutral. But you and I are the determinants whether that change is going to be a positive change or a negative change. Whether the change is going to turn us forward or turn us backwards. But the, fun, the, the fact is, in life, negative change will occur <laughs> without any effort. If we make no effort, there will still be change, but it usually will be negative change. You need no effort to create negative change. You need no effort to cause rottenness. 
You need no effort to cause things to break. You need no effort to cause things to grow old and die. Negative change is natural. It will take place whether or not there's any force in action, any intentional force in action. But we are talking about positive change, and positive change takes effort. Ladies and gentlemen, and that is why you are here at this Youth Power Conference 2009. And we are hoping that as we look at change in our homes and in our educational institutions, our colleges, universities, uh, primary schools, whatever, next year we'll also look at the two final facets of change in 2010. My aim this morning with this presentation is to inspire a paradigm shift, a change of mindset, to inspire a shift from the very feeble, oh, what can one person do? I'm only one person to a strong and powerful mindset which says there's something called the power of one. The power of one. Hence, my presentation is entitled One Power. The power of one. One power. The power of one. We've been talking about youth power for a few years now, about five years running. And I want to tell you that youth power plus one power, and I'll explain one power very soon, is a dangerous mix. It's like petrol and fire coming together. If you would have a youth power mindset and also have a one power mindset. For years I've been running young people on different continents of the world and I've traveled quite a bit, just inspiring young people about youth power. That we must use our youth power to shape the world. I'm talking about the power we have in our numbers. There are more young people on earth than ever before in the history of the world. I'm talking about our influence. I'm talking about our control, our ability for young people to hold situations to ransom, as it were. I'm talking about our natural and unique and even spiritual giftings. I'm talking about our strength and our energy. I'm talking about the passion of young people. All this comes together to form youth power. And I'm saying youth power must make an impact on the world today. From BC, to AD today, the history is full of examples of youth power in action. And I won't bore you by going through the list over and over and over again. Youth power has shaped every sphere of life. Youth power, as we introduced it five years ago, has sought to defeat a certain mindset that says, Oh, I'm only a youth. I'm only a teenager. Oh, I'm only in my 20s. We've sought to defeat that paradigm, that mindset, that syndrome. A syndrome that has been touted by many people, especially adults. But unfortunately, sometimes even young people believe that themselves. I am only a youth. And it's interesting that when King Saul in the Bible met David, when David threw a challenge and said, you know, this giant that has defied the nation for 40 days, 40 nights, I am going to face him by the power of God, though I'm only a 17-year-old boy. Saul looked at David, a young, ruddy youth, and looked at Goliath and told David, Young man, you are only a boy. And this man has been fighting since his youth. You are only a boy. The concept of youth power is to deal with that mindset <laughs> that you are only a boy. And like I said, sometimes not only do adults say it, but sometimes people say it to despise us to the extent that Paul had to write to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.12. He says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are youth. And sometimes it does have an effect on the way we see ourselves. It certainly had an effect on Jeremiah to the extent that when God Almighty himself called Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 5 and says, come, before you were formed, I knew you. Before you were born, I appointed you as a prophet. This is my assignment. This is my mission for you. Jeremiah said, God, I am only a youth. I am only a youth. So, 
I'm glad that over the past five years we've been able to dispel this notion and I've seen many young people because of Youth Power, the book, and because of the conference and tips, etc. People have started their own businesses, people have broken records here and there, people are doing amazing things. The, their youth power is having an effect on our world and I thank God for that. And the reason why I'm talking about one power is because youth tend to want numbers. That's why we are so susceptible to youth, uh, to peer pressure. We want who's also doing it, or everybody's doing it, that kind of mindset. So while we have an advantage in numbers, because we are many youth in the world today, and that's one of the sources of youth power, I want to deal with another sickness, another malady, another syndrome, which is the I am only one syndrome or I'm the only person I'm only one person syndrome that is why I want to talk about one power it's about time you've got to infuse not only with youth power but also one power the power of one the power of one person the impact one person is able to make never underestimate one power never underestimate the power of one single individual I am not sure that there's been anything that has, has, the, that has had the power to cause change in our society today like the combination of youth power and one power. And just this week, as I, as I thought and prayed and, 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 and meditated about what can I share with, with, with my fellow young people at this youth power conference, I stumbled upon a story. A story told by Faith Karimi. And posted on CNN October 5th and he titles the story he or she titles the story Malawian boy uses wind power Malawian boy uses wind to power hope Malawian boy uses wind to power hope electrify a village and if I had written this story you know how it would sound I would have said Youth power electrifies village. <laughs> Simple. That, that's what we're seeing here. But you see a classic case of not only youth power, because this young man is only 22 years of, old, of age, but you also see one power, the power of one person, in spite of, of, of loneliness, in spite of lack of resources, in spite of ridicule, to make an impact on his village. But now, not just his village, his country, Malawi, not just his country, the continent, he's on CNN now. He's reached the attention of people like Al Gore. He travels on conferences here and there because he started out with two tools, two incredible potentials that God has put in you, youth power and one power. Let me read the story to you from CNN. It says, William Kam Kwamba dreamed of powering his village with the only resource that was freely available to him. His native Malawi had gone through one of his, its worst droughts seven years ago, killing thousands. His family and others were surviving on one meal a day. The red soil in his Masitala hometown was parched, leaving his father a farmer without any income. But amid all the shortages, one thing was still abandoned. Wind. I want to do something to help and change things, he said. Then I said to myself, if they can make electricity out of wind, I can try too. Kwakwamba was kicked out of school when he couldn't pay $80 in school fees. And he spent his days at the library where a book with photographs of windmills caught his eye. I thought, this thing exists in this book. It means someone else managed to build this machine, he said. So armed with that book, one power, one boy, one book, the then 14-year-old taught himself to build windmills. He scored through junkyards for items including bicycle parts, plastic pipes, tractor fans and car batteries, for the tower, he collected wood from the blue gum trees. Everyone laughed at me, he says, when I told them I was building 
a windmill. They thought I was crazy. He said. Then I started telling them I was just playing with the parts. That sounded more normal. Oh, I'm only playing with the parts. One power. This was in 2002. We're in 2009 now. William now has five windmills. And guess what? The tallest of the windmills is 37 feet. He built one windmill at an area school that he uses to teach classes on windmill building. The windmills not only that generate electricity and pump water in his hometown, which is north of the capital of Malawi, Lilongwe. Neighbors regularly trek across the dusty footpath to his house to do what? To charge their cell phones. See? It takes one person, one youth, who takes his power that God has given him to change his environment and now see, thousands flock to do what? To charge their mobile phones. To use... Huh. And this is even worse. Others stop to listen to Malawian reggae music blaring from a radio. Why don't you do something? We, you see, we have not just been brought here on earth to be consumers. We are contributors as well. You must make an impact. You must, like, like some people put it, you must make a dent on the universe. What difference is society? What difference is society experience because you are alive? About 5% of the world make things happen. Maybe about 10% watch things happen. The rest, the remaining 85% have no clue, no idea what's happening, no idea what's going on. See these people. Because of one young man, they go and charge their phones and they go and listen to reggae music. Anyway, when he started building the first windmill in 2002, aware that he was crazy, spread all over his village. Some people said he was bewitched. A common description for people with perplexing behavior in some African cultures, we know that. All of us, this is his sister Doris Kamkwamba speaking. She says, all of us, even my mother, thought he, he had got out of his mind. Villagers will surround him to snicker and point. Kamkwamba said, ignoring them, he would quietly bolt pieces using a screwdriver made of heated nail and a corn cob. Heated nail and a corn cob. That was his screwdriver. The heat from both the crown and, and the melted, flattened pipes he used as blades did not deter him. Three months later, his first windmill turned to life as relief swept over him. <sighs> as the blades whirled, a bulb attached the windmill flickered on. I wanted to finish it to prove them wrong, he said. I knew people would then stop thinking I was crazy. Kakwamba is now 22 years old. He's a student at the African Leadership Academy and a lead South African school for young leaders. Donors pay for his education. His story has turned him into a globetrotter. His story of youth power, his story of one power. His story has turned him into a globetrotter. Former US Vice President Al Gore, an avid advocate of green living, has applauded his work. Kakwamba is invited to events worldwide to share his experience with entrepreneurs. During a recent trip to Palm Springs in California, he saw a real windmill for the first time. Lofty and majestic. A far cry from the wobbly wooden structures that spin in his backyard. Nevertheless, they work. Former Associated Press correspondent Brian Miller, who covered Africa, wrote a book, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. After hearing Kakwamba's story, the book was released in the United States just this October, or end of September. Mila, a native of San Antonio, Texas, said he lived with Kwakwamba in his village for months to write the book. The story was a refreshing change after years of covering bloody conflicts in that region, Mila said. Kwakwamba is part of a generation of Africans who are not waiting for their governments or aid groups to come to their rescue, according to the author. 
They are seizing opportunities and technology and finding solutions to their own problems, Mila said. One of the keys of his success, that is Kokwamba's success, is he's never wanted to rest on his laurels. This statement here by Mila is key. He says, a generation of Africans who are not waiting for their governments or aid groups to come to their rescue. It is time for youth power to engage one power. That if it means going alone, I will, until others see it and join in it. One power. The power of one man. And when I talk about one man, I'm using man as both female man and male man. I'm talking about man as a species, man as homo sapiens. The power of one person, one power, to change his world and even their world. You know, if there ever was a poster, let's put this on the wall in heaven. If there ever was a poster that has never been taken off from the walls of heaven, it reads something like this. Wanted. Point man. Wanted. Point man. You see, a point man is usually the leader, the lead soldier of an infantry patrol on combat operations. He's the one who leads. It's a person at the forefront. And obviously, that person risks taking the first bullet, right? But history has always sought a point man. And I do believe in numbers, don't get me wrong. I believe one will chase a thousand, two, ten thousand. I believe the power of synergy, like the scripture says. But you see, it says one will chase a thousand, two, ten thousand. But if one is chasing nothing, <laughs> what is ten thousand times zero? Zero. You need that one man first, that point man, that pivot, that fulcrum, that center. The change we speak of in our homes and our churches, the change we want to see in our nation, the change we want to see on the airwaves and in our ghettos and our educational establishments, the change we want to see will not happen by groups. It will not happen by institutions. It will certainly not take place by government machinery. It will take single men and women, single people who are ready to be agents of change, especially young people. Youth power and one power. Yes, Romans tells us the whole creation cries in earnest expectation, in eager expectation for the revelation of the sons of God. Creation is crying. Which area of society, you tell me, which area of society today doesn't need change? You tell me, C-H-A-N-G-E, which area, which facet doesn't need change today? Who is that one man? Who is that one woman who is going to bring that change? Scripture is full. The scriptures are replete of examples of the power of one man, of one woman. And God, when God wants to institute change, you check the scriptures. He doesn't look for men. He doesn't look for congregations. He doesn't look for churches. He looks for a man. One power, the power of one man. In Ezekiel 22, 30, you see the scripture coming out so strongly. I sought a man. A man. God says, I sought a man. And I'm telling you that the, 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 the perpetual poster in heaven is wanted. Point man. I seek a man. A man. Not some men. A man. Let me read the whole of Ezekiel 22, 30 for you from, from the New International Version. It says, I look for a man among them who would build up the wall. And stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land. So I will not have to destroy it. But guess what? I found none. I found none. I sought a man who will build a wall. For that village in the long way, God sought a man who will build a windmill. Yes, for HIV AIDS today, God seeks a man who will bring a solution. What is it? Changing our homes? God seeks a man. A man. A man. 
And he says, instead of finding one power, I found none. If God looks at your hope today, is he going to find one? Or is he going to find none? I sought a man. Stop looking at your father to bring the solution to the family crisis. <laughs> it may not be from him. It may be from you. I seek a man. You're looking at your headmaster. You're looking at your vice chancellor. Perhaps you're looking at the president. Yes, you thought that when there's a change of government, things will change. Have things changed? Have you ever seen yourself as a point man? I sought a man. He seeks one. Will he find one? Or will he find none? Let me give you two or three other scriptures that emphasize this. The power of one. One power. In 1 Samuel 13, 14, the scripture says, The Lord hath sought out a man after his own heart. A man. One power. The power of one. Jeremiah 4, 25. I beheld and lo, there was no man. No man. Jeremiah 5, 1. I love this. It says, run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Maybe for you it's through the streets of Accra. Maybe for you it's through the streets of Montreal. Maybe it's through the streets of New York. He says, run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see if you can find a man. Not if you can find some people, not if you can find a pressure group, not if you can find the heart group, not if you could find people's church, not if you can, if you can find a man that executed judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. God was prepared to pardon a whole city, a whole nation, if he would find a man. And you see, one man, if you have found one man, and, and this is where one of the scriptures that blows my mind because it's so ironic that Abraham, of all people, <laughs> missed the secret. The secret of one power. <laughs> I, I mean, he's the last person who should have missed it. You know, in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, when he was negotiating for the non destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, God, what if you find 40 righteous men in there? What if you find 35? What if you find 30? He ended at 10. If you had known the secret that God will save for the sake of a man, one man, the power of one. You know why? Because every single man has the stamp of God, has the image of the creator. He created us in his image, in his likeness, a man. It is not a joke what people say, that if you were the only one on earth, Christ will still have come to die, a man. That is why it's such a dastardly evil. It's such evil. To kill babies who are the image of God in the name of safety and, 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 and conception issues, abortions. You are killing a man. Do you know the power of that one man? The power of that one seed? A man. I sought a man. And I'm saying it, 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 it's, it's interesting that Abraham of all people, it's ironic that Abraham of all people seem to have missed the secret. Because he was the epitome of this secret, of the secret of one power. Because God told him clearly, Abraham, from you, from you one man, from one single seed, you, that single seed of yours, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Abraham could have, should have, backtracked a bit and said, well, if one man, if only through me, God can bless all the nations of the earth, then could through one man God save all the nations of the earth? How much more, how much less a city or one nation? He missed it. He said, 10 is a good number. If you find 10 men, you wouldn't destroy. He missed the secret of one man, one power, one man. Wanted. Wanted today. One man. A point man. One person. One male man, one female man. One person 
who is prepared to be an agent of change, who is prepared to make an impact in their church, in their home, on the airways, in the media, in their nation, in the community, in their ghetto, in their school, in their institution of learning. One man. And scripture is spotted all over, dotted all over with examples of one power. Both good examples of one power, bad examples of one power. In fact, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Why is our world in a broken state? Thanks to one woman, thanks to one man, Adam. One man sinned and still entered the world. One man, one man, one man. Noah, one man. One man preserved all the human and animal genetic material that we have on earth today. One man, in one ark. He saved the planet literally. Noah, one power. The power of one man. I just talked about Abraham. In fact, you know, all the three major world religions that are fighting over Jerusalem, that are scrambling over Jerusalem, are all from his loins. Christianity, Judaism, Islam. All squabbling for Jerusalem because one man birthed them all. One man. Should we talk about Joseph? One man, one young man for that matter, who saved the world from a global food crisis. One man, the power of one. Everybody knows the story of Moses. One man, the deliverance he brought to a nation. One man. The power of one. Oh, perhaps you've read the story of Achan. One man who just because of his selfishness, because of his covetousness, stole some items and got God angry. A whole nation lost battle because of one man. The power of one. How about 17-year-old boy David? Like I mentioned earlier, a combination, beautiful combination of youth power and one power. Save the whole nation from slavery. One man. One power, the power of one. Should I talk about Paul? We owe virtually half of the New Testament to Paul. Should I talk about Gideon? You know, this year we're looking at change in the New Power Conference. We're looking at change in our homes. Have you thought for a moment that Gideon caused a change in his home first? He used to suffer from a lack of youth power. When he was called by God, he said, look, I'm, only, I, I, I'm, the, I'm the youngest in my, in my family. I'm a small boy. God says, get some youth power and shift that paradigm. He says, then he, he, uh, he was afraid. He was the only one. He got some youth power. He got some one power. See the change. It began with his home. His own father, who was worshipping an idol, began to back this young man. And said, hey, people of the village, let your idols defend themselves if there are any idols at all. Give your brother a change, a revival in his own home first. Soon he was able to rally 33,000 men. But it began by one man. One power. The power of one man who used to doubt his youth power, who was clueless about one power. Need I go on? This is not a sermon. I don't want to keep, keep raising all these biblical examples, but. Scriptures that are replete with examples of one power. Let's look a little bit at contemporary history. Examples of one power. Look at the impact. You look at the African continent. Go east a bit. If you're in West Africa, go south a bit. You find the incredible impact of one man in Zimbabwe today. One power. The power of one man. Robert Mugabe. You know, and many of us youth are growing in a world where we, we, it's, a, it's, a, it's a monopolar world now, but the, the, the world used to be bipolar. The world used to have this tension between the West and the East, this tension between communism and the West capitalism. All because of one man. One man who in his youth wrote a book, 
wrote a certain thesis called the Communist Manifesto. One man, and he was a young man. I think he was just barely 28 years old. Up to today, Northern North Korea, and to some extent Cuba, is still under the grasp, the grasp, the grip and the grasp of communism. One young man. At one time, one man decided <laughs> that anybody who was not white enough must die. One man. He managed to kill six million Jews. He managed to throw the whole world into war, World War II. Because of that war, Hiroshima was bombed, Nagasaki was bombed. Even up to now, the descendants who are suffering from the effects of that nuclear bomb. One man, just Hitler, one power, the power of one, albeit for evil. One power, the power of one. Every church we know today that is not Catholic, it's a result of one man, Martin Luther. A reformer born in the 15th century, not Martin Luther King, that's the civil rights movement leader, he was Martin Luther King Jr., I'm talking about Martin Luther the reformer, born in the 15th century. Discovered certain truths from the word of God and said, hey, we've got to break away from these dogma in the Catholic church. Every other church that is not Catholic is called Protestant and born out of one man, Martin Luther King. Martin, Martin Luther, not Luther King Jr. Martin Luther the reformer. One man. And this one man is still alive now. This year he turned 80. One man. He's four, he has 14 grandchildren living in England and looking forward to his country hosting the 2012 Olympic Games. One man called Roger Bannister. This one man changed the world with a combination of youth power and one power when he broke the seemingly unsurmountable Sports Barrier. Such a feat that made Sports Illustrated. You know the magazine Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated calls him the, the man of the 20th century as far as sports is concerned. He broke an impenetrable sports barrier. In his time, it was said that it was an impossible thing for any human to run one mile under four minutes. He broke it. Roger Bannister was then a 25, 25 year old. Are you listening to this? A medical student. He was not a professional athlete. He was a medical student. Broke the record in 1954. I read the record, the world record has stood up 4.01 seconds has stood that way for nine humiliating years. This young man says, I've got some youth power. I've got some one power. This thing can be broken. He made it in precisely three minutes. 59.4 seconds. Three minutes, 59.4 seconds. One man. And the funny thing is that, well, funny now looking back, since we broke that, everybody started breaking that. <laughs> In fact, his record lasted only 46 days because one guy called John Landy, who was an Australian, who <laughs> ran under four, four, four minutes to broke that record just 46 days after. And ever since, like I said, everybody breaks. And who, can, who runs one mile over, over four minutes? One power, one man. The power of one. How about the devastating harm one man, through his one theory, has done to this world? Darwin. Darwin's theory of evolution. How about uh, Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code? One man. The power of one man. 
Need I repeat the story of Mary Jones? I hope you've heard of Mary Jones. A 10 year old girl who so badly wanted her own copy of the Bible, the Word of God. You know what Mary Jones did? She saved her pennies, little, little monies, for six whole years to be able to get her own copy of the Bible. Come age 16, she had made enough money from her savings. Mary Jones walked, she trekked, treaded 25 miles to go and purchase her own copy of the Word of God, of the Bible. You know the result of that? Of walking 25 miles to Bala? Somebody saw her, was inspired by her story, and that led to the birth of the British and indeed the foreign Bible society all around the world. Providing Bibles at affordable costs to people because of one girl, not even one woman, one girl, one girl, one youth, youth power, one power. I could go on and on. I'm talking about one power, the power of one. God says, I sought a man, and I tell you, I can hear heaven ringing the same chorus. I seek a man. I seek a man. I'm looking for one man. I'm looking for one youth, because the youth have got the influence. One youth who's got control. One youth who's got passion. One youth who's got strength and energy. One youth who have given some gifts to. One youth. One man. One. That is all God needs. He asked for five loaves and two fish. He asked for one single rod in, in Moses' hand. All he needs is a nucleus. All he needs is one man. All God needed was an egg and a sperm to form one single cell. One single cell. And that began your growth. Look at you today with billions of cells in your body. All God needs is a nucleus. Are you that one man? One power. The power of one. Let me tell you. There is no limit. There is no limit. To what one youth. Fully yielded to this one most high God. Can do. In this world. There is no limit. To what one youth committed to his or her God-given purpose. Using his or her shape, his or her spiritual gifts and passions and talents and personality and experiences. Who has thrust himself upon this one mighty God who holds all power. I said there is no limit to what that one youth can do. In the hands of the most high God. No limits. As I bring this message to a close. Remember that just as through one man. Sin entered the world. One power. The power of one person. Also through one man's sacrificial one time death and resurrection. Jesus Christ. All six billion plus people on the planet earth can be saved from sin and its devastating consequences. Can have eternal life. I like the way Romans puts it. He says through one man, sin and death enter the world. Yet through another one man, life, hope has come. One man, Jesus Christ. One man, the power of one. True, the whole creation cries. Creation cries for one man. God calls, seeks for one man. Will you answer the call? Will you please answer the call? For you've got it. You've got your youth. You've got your youth power. And you've got the power of one. 
Will you answer the call? Will somebody out there answer the call today? That call in your home, that call in your school, that call in your church, that call in your nation, that call in your community, that call on the airways and the media, that call to write that book, that call to make that record, that call to make that sale, that call to bring that life, that call to send that message, that call who will I send? Who shall go for us? And whenever God says that from the, from the, from the walls of heaven, from the chamber, of the third heaven he is not calling which group he's not calling which people he's not calling which church he's calling which man and once upon a time a guy called Isaiah stepped up to the plate and said here am I send me send me is there anybody out there today say here am I <laughs> not here we are here am I here am I Am I? Send me. I will be that point man. Though they will laugh, I will be that point man. Though I may travel a lonely road, I will be that point man. Though it cost me all I have, I will be that point man. The power of one. One power. You know, even if the difference you're going to make is going to be in only one person's life, and even for one time, it'll still be worth it. One power. I remember the story of a young man who worked along a sandy beach. And as he did, he found all these shellfish on the seashore. And what he would do is that he would pick one and throw it into the, back into the ocean. Because he had seen that when the shellfish would stay too long on the shore, they would dry up, they would wither and die. So he went along the beach, a beach strewn with all these shellfish. And he would pick one and throw it back into the sea so it could live. One boy, one shellfish at a time. One shellfish at a time. Then comes along this elderly man and he says, young man, what do you think you are doing? He says, well, I thought it was pretty obvious I am saving the world, throwing these shellfish back into the sea so they can survive. This man looks at him and shakes his head. He laughs, a very bellicose laughter. <laughs> and, 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 and says but look at look at the look at the shore this shore is strewn with shellfish look at them thousands perhaps millions of shellfish how are you going to make a difference how is this going to make any difference picking one and throwing it into the sea the young man looked at him shook his head pick the next shellfish threw it into the sea and said to this man in all wit and wisdom well it made the whole world to that one it means the whole world to that one single shellfish you may not save the world but you may save somebody's world it may mean the whole world, even if it's to one person. I want to tell you today in conclusion, that contrary to what you think, you are not too small. No, you are not too young. No, you are not too insignificant. You are surely not a minority. For one small man, United with one big God. That's a majority. You and God form a majority. And there is no limit to what a youth who is committed to his purpose, to her purpose, to her mission in life, and has thrust him or herself into the hands of the Creator, of the Almighty. There is no limit. To what impact you can make. Youth power.
plus one power. Oh, what a dangerous combination. One power. The power of one. I want to throw an invitation to you. If you want to say, God, here am I. Here I am. Send me. Here am I. I'll make a difference in my home. I'm prepared to make a difference in my church, in my nation, in my workplace, in my school, in my university. I'm prepared to brighten the corner where I am. This is the place. This is the time. To fuse your youth power with your one power and see what God does with you in impacting your world in your generation. I stumbled upon a quote by a guy called Jack Kemp, and this is what he said, and I'd like to end with that. He says, The power of one man or one woman doing the right thing for the right reason and at the right time is the greatest influence in our society. I love that. Jack Kemp said that. The power of one man or one woman, one power. The power of one man or one woman doing the right thing for the right reason and at the right time is the greatest influence in our society wanted one man a point man i sought a man god still seeks a man our society is crying for one man one I think it's appropriate to share a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you praise for the gift of life. Thank you that we are still young. The Bible says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. These are the best times of our lives. These are the times we have the influence and the control and the strength and the energy and the passions and the talents. Oh Lord, may we not put them on the shelf. Today we yield these into your hands. Lord, may each of us have our eyes open to see what specific area you are calling us to influence. The Lord, though we be single, though we be one man, one woman, one child, one youth, God, you would use that seed to influence the whole earth in the name of Jesus. One person at a time. For if through one man sin came to the world, If through one man, Noah, you saved the world. If through one man, Jesus Christ, you brought salvation. And we've seen throughout history, the power of one youth and what you've done. Through us. Through this one man standing here. Even I, O Lord. May you make an indelible mark on history. May I leave fair footprints. May those watching leave fair footprints in the sands of time. That like David, it will be said of us that after we had said God's purpose in our own generation, we were put to rest. May we not just pass through this earth. May we impact it. But the Bible says that as they pass through the valley of Beraka, they make it a place of springs. As we pass through our schools and our churches and our homes and our nations and the nations of the world, even in our homes, May we make it a place of springs. May we make an impact. May we make our own dent on the universe with youth power, with one power. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Say